welcome back to another weekly daily Wednesdays where we like to sit back, Yay. relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and pretty much anything else that catches our eyes. I'm Vince Stone. Mm-hmm. That's Joe Bryant. <laughs> and that's Pedro Mateus. You know him. Hello. Hello. Yay. And everyone joining us live, <laughs> give them a big hand because they're awesome. Yay. We love you, chat room. <laughs> See, look at that. I mean, just pouring out love. What's up, Joe? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Oh boy! Well, I'm excited because I finally got my my new 300 uh, megabit symmetric fiber internet. Yay! So I'm coming in much clearer, especially on the video and the audio. <laughs> Poke it with a stick. Poke it yeah. With a stick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, everything's on fire, man. Um, I've been kind of busy uh, putting together like the super awesome, in depth, like legit hardware software mm-hmm. uh, guide. Maybe you'd want to call it for how we broadcast here with all this nonsense and a lot of nonsense you can't see, but really a focus on how the audio system Mm -hmm. set up with video and all that fun stuff. Uh, Stay tuned for that. I should have that up for patrons Friday. So Pedro, I expect you to watch it because this is definitely one of those. Oh, Ben was hit uh, by yeah. a bus and eaten by a raptor. <laughs> raptor so we, we, and we need to keep this going. Yeah, right. okay. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one of those types of videos. So uh, again, for the 156th week in a row, you didn't put anything in the show notes as to what you're doing. What yeah, are you up no. to? Uh, not much, actually. I've been basically on cost contention mode because this month is a, uh, well, at the end of the month is Nori's birthday, so I'm saving money. Aww. So... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> can't really talk okay. about new things because I can't buy them. Hey, we all need to save up our money because first thing we're going to be talking about <laughs> is the Pine 64. They got two new pieces of kit. Uh, they rolled it out with the community stall at Fostum 2019. Couple of announcements. This one, mm, all right, this is neat. They're talking about the Pine book, which is going to be an ARM-based uh, 64-bit ARM. And it looks neat, 11.6 inch screen, and okay, maybe, maybe. Hey, it's got USB Type C. I'm not terribly mm-hmm. excited about this because this is like, okay, this is kind of a weak um, Chromebook. So, what's yes. really? <laughs> I mean, it's not uh, comparatively speaking to some yeah. of the uh, ARM-based Chromebooks. It's actually very powerful. Because it's got a uh, 64-bit ARM-based SoC. But I really want to get my hands on one of those new Pine books. But they're like $199. And that's a bit much that I'm willing to pay for a play around with it uh, type of laptop. So, uh, Pine... (laughs) I, I don't even want to hear that, man, because talk about <laughs> playing around thing, the big announcement, the one thing I was really happy to see is the Pine tablet, because we're like, we want a Linux tablet that doesn't cost $600. We always throw that in there at the end, too. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, winner. A64 SOC. Yes. I'm like, okay, this might be cool. And right up until the point where I got it, it has a 10-inch 720p. Oh, it's great. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, man. That didn't make me very happy. Now, admittedly, they're saying this thing's going to be $79 for the tab itself. $99 mm-hmm. if you want a keyboard, which, okay, you got my... T- I'm going to buy it. Yeah. I'm not pretending <laughs> here. It's like, oh, I'm not going to buy it because it's seven. i I'm still going to buy ones. But I don't know exactly what kind of chicanery we're going to be able to get away with with only two gigs of RAM. Yeah, that's a bit of a limitation, and the 720p screen certainly doesn't help. Jill, what do you think? Yeah, well, I'm I'm really interested actually in the Pinebook Pro that's in the article, uh, (laughs) for obvious reasons. And um, (laughs) actually, I'm I'm gonna (laughs) a little bit. uh, (laughs) They should have replaced the Windows Super Key logo with the text penguin though, and the Pine Tab picture. (laughs) At least (laughs) I've done that. (laughs) <laughs> yes but um i actually wasn't impressed that the pine uh tab um it was only an extra 20 dollars for a keyboard i mean mm-hmm. you, you know how much apple gouges you for that <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's pretty cool actually and uh pine book pro is uh is is the one i'm really really interested in because that's a, a full-fledged uh um laptop uh desktop <laughs> yeah it's a native arm native, linux yeah. laptop which is really nice 
<laughs> Why is my nose green? Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely could have went places with that, Pedro, but uh, <laughs> yeah. let's talk about a system that's going to be a little bit more powerful, but a lot more expensive. Oh, yes. Okay, so <laughs> this is uh, System76 is doing refresh of their Darter Pro Linux laptop. And um, as in System76 tradition, it ships with your choice of Ubuntu 18.04 LTS or their own Pop! OS 1804 or 18.10. And despite its low profile and being extremely battery efficient, the Darter Pro laptop is well <laughs> in uh as all system 76 uh systems are we'll have plenty of expansion slots That's as well really which... not good photoshops yeah mm -hmm. yeah that screen was clearly photoshopped <laughs> on there just saying yeah <laughs> definitely <laughs> so but yeah system 76 has, has always been really good with their expansion shop uh, slots and this one has a usb 3.0 3.1 type c and um, two 3.0 type A's and a one 2.0. So it's nice because it has a new and legacy USB ports as well as an SD card reader. So I've always been impressed with the System76 laptops. Um, well, it's definitely clocking in. I mean, they're making 8th gen Intels available, Core i5, Core i7, and uh, 1080p, Pedro. What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. No, uh, well, it's got a UHD 620 from Intel in it, but it's only... Yeah. yeah, this is uh, a 15.6 inch laptop, which is um, significant in size. And for that size uh, of a screen, you would want at least 2560 by 1440. <laughs> uh but we're not getting yeah. that. And apparently System76 is saying, yeah, that 1080p screen turns out pretty battery efficient. And I can't really argue with them on that. The biggest thing about that one is the mm -hmm. Thunderbolt port. Because yeah. it it does USB Type-C and it does Thunderbolt. So if you want to have like the one laptop that you get to carry around with you all day, and then you bring it home, you plug it into the external uh, GPU adapter... You got yourself a gaming a gaming machine with whatever uh, GPU you happen to have inside that particular uh, yeah. external enclosure. So yeah, that act, that is actually a good idea, and I'm really hoping that all of the um, Linux uh, resellers or system um, manufacturers will actually start to include more Thunderbolt in their laptops. It would be very Definitely. nice to see uh, Tuxedo and Entraware actually come out with something with Thunderbolt in them. That would be really awesome. Let's bring back Firewire, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thunderbolt can actually push like a gigabit per second. The d -d 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 <laughs> I think it's a neat piece of kit. They're starting at $9.99. Um, but... Keep in mind, man, I mean, you're definitely paying for some good support. You know? Yeah, it is a 15.6 inch Ultrabook for that bit. Yes. So <laughs> good to know. Uh, Linux kernel, Spectre. I've been told on multiple occasions only by one person. It's not a real thing. I never have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there, uh, as you may know, uh, there were some big uh, hardware vulnerabilities when it, come to, when it came to Intel processors. Uh, late last year you may have uh known them as the spectre and meltdown vulnerabilities and linux was one of the first operating systems to of course start work on those patches and people immediately picked up on them because of the patches that were being submitted to the kernel and one of the big drawbacks of those patches mm. was the uh, reduction in performance. So if you had a system that was particularly vulnerable to certain Spectre variants, of which there are eight now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, Give it another week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like eight total variants of uh, Spectre and two, I think, of Meltdown. Meltdown, but yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. the big one was uh, Variation 4, which was the one that the patch caused the biggest performance decrease. And of course, uh, the Linux kernel implemented those fixes, and it came at a significant performance impact. So a lot of people kicked up a big fuss, and AMD was like, yeah, we have a near 0% chance of being hit by that, so how about a chance to disable it? 
and the only way you had to disable it was to completely remove it. But now there is SSBD, which is a mitigation thing. It doesn't completely fix it because, again, it's a hardware flaw, so it's very hard to completely fix it. But it mitigates uh, the effects of Spectre on a per application basis, which is very nice. Very nice. You don't have to have that <laughs> performance impact if your application isn't checking uh, memory to see if something else is running. So that's very good. That's very good. <laughs> yeah. To me, this was, uh, you know, one of the best ways to do it, having per app fla flagging. It's a nice approach to the all or nothing dilemma as far as yeah. Spectre pr protection is concerned. So, um, and yeah, definitely, um, this is awesome. And, uh, th that was a good point that Pedro brought up about Red Hat. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Red Hat yeah. is actually one of the, uh, big, uh, Linux companies pushing for a fix, a proper fix for this that doesn't have the performance impact because they have a lot of enterprise customers running yes. Intel CPUs that are vulnerable to Spectre, and they uh, yeah. don't want the performance uh, <laughs> decrease. Well, that's definitely so, a yeah. thing. I mean, this really hit Intel pretty hard, and, like, branch speculation is something everything does. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm absolutely sure that, you know, everyone on Team Blue, including Team Blue itself, is like, yes, this is nice for the all or nothing, because we're thinking about, like, that. no, we're talking about VMs, you know, the VX works and stuff like that. That this is running on just like crippling it. I mean, it was yep. bad with something like thirty percent, and uh, yeah, you know. And I'm sure AMD is like, "Hey, you want to buy some Apex?" And because, <laughs> yeah. AMD was hit. just living the dream at that point. Oh, what's that? Yeah. We just launched a new architecture, and well, then tells me hit by a pretty serious. You want bug? something like this rolling out right now? Because you're going to be looking yeah. at like twelve to sixteen months for hardware validation. Yeah. So we're definitely getting to the time where something like this needs to appear. But mm -hmm. um, we have a story about Gnome, and we mm -hmm. got to give it to <laughs> our resident Gnome fanboy, Pedro Mateus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, everyone knows exactly I don't particularly like Gnome, but with the new version, uh, 3.32, they're actually improving performance, which has been one of the big big uh, mm -hmm. sticking points when it comes to the GNOME shell and GNOME 3 and everything else around GTK 3. And they are uh, basically going into the code, getting rid of a lot of the cruft, including the translucency on the top bar, uh, which uh, has had issues since day one and no one's ever addressed them, possibly because no one could figure out what the hell they were doing for that bug to happen. But uh, no, they're getting rid of a lot of the useless craft and they're actually improving performance, which is very good to see. Now, I am questioning, what exactly mm. are they doing in the change from 3.30 to 3.32, which is going to cause that much of a performance increase? Because on this uh, mm. X230 right here, I am running uh, Ubuntu 1904 beta, and it's running um, GNOME 330. And the performance is actually very good. It only uses like 600 megs as it boots, so that's about in line what you'd expect nowadays. And yeah, it's smooth. All the animations are smooth. Everything works really well. So what exactly are they doing differently? <laughs> well, one of the ideas I I had is uh, uh, now that Canonical is using GNOME as their default uh, uh, desktop manager for Ubuntu and, and contributing to it, it should get faster, right? <laughs> of course, because they're doing... Yeah. Remember Unity? And, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, remember Unity. And actually, the big app icon redesign in GNOME 3.32 that we talked about last week should also improve the performance of GNOME. It seems simple, but not having to have seven different icons for an application to move around um, is very memory efficient. It'll just have one SVG file now. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> so that that real that actually does really speed up the desktops is the icons and not having to use raster ones using vector ones. <laughs> we have to put a point blank at the end of the day. If you're running GNOME, you shouldn't be running a system low enough in power to where things like icons would make any difference. That's just my personal yeah. opinion. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> However, Use like, XQT. Yes. However, <laughs> what I do have to think about, you know, as someone who runs a desktop that's considered relatively lightweight. 
So we're talking desktop, no window manager. I'm running XFC, as we all know, because I talk about it all the time. Uh, is, Pedro, you're the, my go-to on this. Is running GNOME really that good of idea, or is it really a problem on modern hardware, period? Like, if I installed GNOME, would I notice uh, this? Yes. Uh, you would notice a couple of really egregious crashes on things that shouldn't be crashing. Like if, say, you wanted to watch a full screen YouTube video and all of a sudden the, si the sound just dies. Pulse audio is still running. It's just the sound goes away. Why? Mm -hmm. That's gnome. That, that's yeah. a gnome <laughs> bug. What about this terminal, though? I mean, if I, if I wanted to dedicate like 35 to 40 minutes every day checking out how my terminal was performing. <laughs> this is critical, I mean, man. You I need could. answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, for people who just have a um, basic use, like say you just want your big icons on your desktop to click on the applications you want to run, and you don't want to uh, particularly worry about anything because you can't really change anything out of the box in GNOME. Gnome is actually a very good uh, desktop in, uh, desktop environment for that. But I wouldn't recommend it for the power user. Yeah. <laughs> use XFCE, use Mate, use OpenBox, use any of the tiling window managers. Any of them, no, really. Sorry, man. You've angered and confused me. I'm going back to using <laughs> Unity. Um, <laughs> I also want to say it's uh, really good on, uh, I'm going to say Jorge's employer, Endless, for letting him use part of his work time to help work on the GNOME project. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is so cool. That's super neat and excellent on both parties. Jill Paint put 2.0s here. Yeah. And I took it for a spin by spit. I mean, I installed it going, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to art. Oh, this is awesome. This is after two years in development. My paint version 2.0.0 alpha has been released. And it's a lot like Krita. Uh, my paint is an open source raster graphics editor with for digital painters with a focus on painting rather than image manipulation or post-processing like the GIMP. And uh, it even it, what's awesome in this release, it adds even more configurable brush features with linear blending for non-pigment layers and brush modes, smudge enhancements, and a spectral paint pigment layer and brush mode. And actually, I have always loved my paint because it has the look and feel of Corel Painter. And uh, yeah, I I <laughs> I am an artist and I do drawing and I teach uh, computer animation and computer graphics. And this is a tool I have my students use a lot, actually. And it, it actually came about uh, about the same time as Krita. And uh, so it's been around a very, very long time. And it's it's very intuitive and I think very easy to use. <laughs> so I was yeah, really excited uh... about it. I read the uh, mm -hmm. like the, the URL on the show notes. It's like, oh, is it Pinta? No, it's my paint. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually hoping someone would grab Pinta and rework it into something that's actually usable nowadays and release something mm -hmm. off of it. But yeah, no, no, it's my paint. It's like, yeah. Uh, can we have Pinta, please? Someone grab that project and give it a proper yeah. kicking in the, uh, the Goonies, please. <laughs> yeah. One I thing I Pinta noticed too. digging around, I tried Paint 2.0, as I said. They have an app image and it worked out of the box, which is good because I've been yes. dealing with. I'm going to throw mm -hmm. both y'all under the bus snaps and flat packs. Mm -hmm. this, this is just a nasty time to be dealing with either. Well, let me <laughs> relying on either of those two technologies and expecting them to work as they say on the tin. <laughs> that can be dicey. But app image, lo and behold, that old timer came out, it launched, it ran, and mm -hmm. it. it really seems like it's geared more because it starts you with this nice canvas and it's like oh i can do calligraphy and uh portraits or yeah. anything like that something mm -hmm. you would want to have like a wacom tablet some type of digitizer to take full advantage of yes mm -hmm. good on them one thing i will say uh being a paint program if you are watching the video version was effectively two minutes of me trying to find screenshots man I mean, <laughs> I tried. I even went to the GitHub page. I'm like, nope, they're just not having that, man. Uh, speaking of that. which, uh, not ha not including screenshots in their particular release announcement. 
flow blade <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <Okay. laughs> and speaking of flat packs <laughs> hey man, we like 2.0 releases here on lw2w and uh, yes. 2.0 comes with the largest changes to workflow and ux since the very first release yeah pretty cool man <laughs> uh, i was really interested in this uh back in 1.14 when that came out because they introduced timeline audio syncing, which makes my life so much easier when mm -hmm. it works correctly. And again, this was a flat pack. I put it on. It kind of worked for the most part. Uh, one of the big features in this, they did some things with the GUIs and all that, but they now have mm -hmm. standard and film style workflow options. So that's kind of a nice touch. Uh, big one, keyframes. There's a yes. new keyframe tool. And that is big because if mm -hmm. you're doing any type of refined control <laughs> over... Uh, animations or just audio anything we want to be able to slap those keyframes in there transitions anything and the like so that's now a thing with flow blade and they do uh make a point I'm like hey we have a new custom fee i was like maybe you don't want to tap mm -hmm. on that if you didn't test it on 1804 because <laughs> all of my dialog boxes to save or close or options they're presented to me yeah. in a shade of white with the <laughs> white, lettering yes. being, uh, the lettering is just a slightly less shade of that white. We're talking like yes. a fraction to where you have to, you know, get up on it and utilize the fact that I have a TN monitor to kind of get off center with it so I can see what yes. it is. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, as Ben pointed out, the keyframe tool is wonderful, actually. That that's kind of one of one one of the things that makes this a pro level application. Um, having being able to manipulate uh, keyframes in real time on the timeline uh, that that's actually really really huge and is industry standard. And it's this is actually my second favorite video editor on Linux after Kden Live. It has one of the best workflows of any of the nonlinear video editors and is extremely powerful and lightweight, clocking in at under 16 megabytes of, <laughs> of RAM, of memory, of, sorry, storage space, and installed. And that's just incredible. I mean, most, most of the video editors out there, even Caden Live, are several hundred megs running. running. So that was really, really impressive. And it also reminds me a lot of Adobe Premiere Pro 6.5 before Adobe went to Creative Cloud. And it uses the same key and mouse bindings of all the popular proprietary offer offerings. Press spacebar to play, timeline, middle mouse button, zooms in and out of timeline, etc. And it has a proper titler for text. That was something missing from OpenShot. <laughs> <laughs> open shot that used to drive me up the wall <laughs> so now well, it's much easier <laughs> i'm gonna say in open shots defense open shot is windows movie maker for linux yes oh, yeah. it is absolutely yes, <laughs> yes definitely yeah Flowblade's trying to kind of you know fit in that in between where it's 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 more customizable and and has more features than open shot not not quite as good as kden live yet but that will come. It's it, it just needs to add a lot more effects, and we're there. <laughs> they, they got some work to do. We couldn't use Flowblade to make the... Well, maybe we'll get away with this show. Barely. I'd have to cheese my yeah. way. It's not feature parody. Still got yes. a chunk to go compared to, like, KDN Live. But yeah. also, KDN Live, why don't you enable NV encode from default? Seriously. <laughs> Call me. I'll tell you um, Yes. <laughs> that's pretty neat. <laughs> As I say, good on them. I played around with it, tried it, and uh, looking forward to having like real options outside of like DaVinci or uh, just KDMI, yeah. which is great for you know doing what we do. Pedro, yes. yeah. uh, homebrew. Uh -huh. What is it, man? Mm -hmm. It sounds scary. It's another 2.0 <laughs> release. Oh, 2.0. Yeah, it's another 2.0 release. Uh, and if you've ever had to use a Mac or you are basically given the choice, you can use a Windows laptop or you can use a Mac desktop and you go, yeah, I'll take the Mac, please. Uh, basically, you really want a homebrew because it is a repository which comes with just about everything that the Apple Store doesn't come with. <laughs> including quite, box. Yes, uh, <laughs> including um, quite a few applications which are not available in uh, your standard Linux distro repos because of licensing issues or because they don't meet the quality standards which happen to vary, uh, which have a 
significant variation from package to package depending on who is uh putting out that package but hey uh, when it comes to homebrew basically you want to have it set up if you're a developer or if you're trying something that's not the traditional desktop use uh, for Linux or for Mac or even for uh, Windows if you have the Windows subsystem for Linux installed. And if you're using that, you can actually use Homebrew in there too. And that's one of the big <laughs> things that uh, Homebrew 2.0 actually brings. Uh, awesome. Basically, if you have uh, the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can now use Homebrew in Windows, which is a big big yeah. improvement <laughs> when it comes to those developers uh, out there who are unfortunately stuck on windows so you can now have everything that's available in homebrew you can get that running through the wsl uh they also set brew cleanup to periodically i think it's every 30 days yes every 30 days uh it'll do the usual cleanup process and make sure that a anything long-standing that's uh, been an issue is cleaned up uh, they improved support for OS X. No one really cares about that. Let's be honest. Even uh, Apple's moved on from OS X now. So, yeah, it's these are dangerous just... opinions because I don't want to <laughs> deal with the emails. Like, do you know that guy on your show said Apple's killing OS X? Uh, <laughs> OS X is basically that they have yeah. Mac OS now, the all lowercase Mac OS. Yes. See, now that he's clarified, it makes sense. I just saved someone <laughs> a message. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just another uh, software repository with non-standard software, if you want to call yeah. it that, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely worth a look if you are a developer and you want, like, something else that's different and you want to try to learn something new. Give <laughs> Homebrew a look. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah, Turbo little... Pascal for life. <laughs> 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 Uh, there's a there's a couple of Pascal packages in ho uh, in Homebrew. Just saying, you, I, yeah. I would not fight you on that. I know. You're <laughs> <supposed to be. laughs> okay. Uh, before we bounce out here, we need to thank a couple of beautiful people that make this show possible. Uh, if you want to help out, we are completely listener funded. This is like a thing we do on PBS. <laughs> we we like. Uh, Give us money. No, uh, you do make it possible. If you want to support us, uh, linuxgamecast.com forward slash support. We got a gang of ways to do it. Affiliate links. The best way is Patreon, patreon.com forward slash linuxgamecast. Get some nice rewards, uh, affiliate links, Humble Bundle, Magic Internet Monies, and PayPal. It's brilliant. Thank you so much. Uh, we could not be doing it at this level without your supports. Plus, you get your name in the credits, and uh, you can come hang out with us on Saturdays in our mm -hmm. Discord uh, before the show <laughs> and uh, listen to us as we attempt to try to pretend we know what we're doing. <laughs> but this week, uh, we got a couple of new patrons. Uh, Gonzo2000 <laughs> is our latest patron. Yishan Yay! comes back. Yishan just likes to do it so he can get into our uh, Discord and spy on Strider. <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> um, Marcin... <laughs> I'm probably, but how would you go with that, Pedro? No, no, it's uh, Marcin, Marcin, Marcin. Marcin, all right. <laughs> yeah. Let's increase their pledge. And uh, last but not least, Rule Spider, uh, through uh, Pedro and myself, a uh, puzzle game of sorts. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, of course, and... Massivoni as well, yes. uh, who was also a giver of games earlier today. <laughs> so big thanks to all y'all for supporting this bit of insanity, what we do. It's kind of yes. fun, you know, then we get to be our <laughs> regular selves and we're like, hey, you know, we wish we could yeah. do everything for free, but we managed to pull off a tremendous amount on a shoestring budget and it keeps yeah. things exciting. So <laughs> thank yeah. you Yay. for that. Plus, thank you. Uh... <laughs> I don't know what plus. I, I'm just like, oh yeah, thing. I'm working on that thing. Stay tuned Friday if you're curious about how this uh, monster ticks. Because one thing we do get to do is make some uh, things that could possibly pass for educational videos. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's yes. Do it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Slice some pie. Uh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> They are Ooh, Raspberry Pi 4. It's Yay. not out yet. Yeah, no, that, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> no, man. It's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> yes. uh, one more thing. Release date, specs, price, everything we know, which is not much. 
uh, there will be no pie for you in 2019. Nope, not mm-hmm. going to happen. Uh, they decided against calling it Turbo Weasel 9000. They're going to stick with Raspberry Pi for uh, 40 nanometer. It's going to be a thing of the past. So maybe 28, definitely not seven. I know, want, want. Still going to be 35 bucks. And really, this this is going to like definitely flow into our next story. It's like, are you finally 35 bucks? Uh-huh. I've never complained, but real gigabit ethernet yeah ethernet yeah, yeah. It, you know the way that they're going they're saying uh, the article speculates oh maybe it'll be 28 nanometers because it fits you know right in between it's like the logical progression yeah. if you don't go to 32 bit nanometer you go to 28 that's how it usually goes but uh, given that most of the industry is actually going through a 14 nanometer uh process right now why not ride that wave? Ride the lower prices as they're uh, basically every other company is picking up that particular bit of slack. Uh, oh man, big pie got to him. Oh, what happened? Big oh. pie. Oh. It happens, man. Okay. It, he's talking to Steve, which is, what everyone's <laughs> got to realize, what I was genuinely just about to say, Jill, yeah. was he could walk over to Raspberry Pi's headquarters and just ask him and be back before the end of the show, but... Yes. <laughs> oh, There's no one there True right that. now, otherwise I yeah. would. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Being but a- yeah, it's... With that smaller process note, you could totally get away with actually shoving some proper, um... I don't know, USB Type-C mm. in it? I don't know. Yeah. I guess it really depends on where they want to go with the pie itself. Do you want to stick around with it being a tinkerbox or, you know, something that you could legitimately use as a day-to-day yeah. type system? You know, USB-C would be handy. I could see USB-C being on there, but it's like for charging purposes only. Yeah, and he, and he was making a point that that was not very reliable, and sometimes it isn't. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. um but yeah, I like the fact that they're trying to keep it the same size, and so uh, <laughs> the same size, and also um, that's why they're not going any smaller um, in the, in the chips because they they don't want it also to be more expensive than it already is. Yes. So, yeah, that I don't makes know, sense. Man, seven nanometer, maybe hmm? put some HBM memory on it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Tur- yes. Turbo let's increase pie. that price. Yeah. Let's increase that price from thirty-five dollars to three hundred. Come on, yeah. three hundred watt TDP. Come on, man. live a little. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be brilliant. I'm always looking forward to it. Uh, I think yeah. I have everything except for the Pi Compute module. That's the only thing I haven't bought, and just. Good on them, especially yeah. keeping it at 35 price point because that lets you get it in schools. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And keep it size small so it fits in pre pre existing projects as well. Yeah, so keep the form awesome. factor. And it, yeah. if they are reducing that process uh, size, yeah, they, they could keep the, for, uh, the form factor and it, you know, increase the amount of functionality. That'd be nice. <laughs> All right. Very, very cool. What's up next? Yay! Okay, next up is Pi Hole version 4.2 has been released with many updates. And one of the updates I was happy about is now the Docker image will be updated with the, the new Pi Hole software. Because it used to be that the Docker image had an older version of the software. And now they're making sure uh, that that is, uh, it's the same on both uh, the new Pi and the Docker image. And I actually, remember playing with the Pi Hole software on my Raspi in 2015 during the initial release. And I was very impressed with how lightweight it was, the user interface, and how it, well it removed ads. It actually does its job. And it also uses one of my favorite web servers of all time, LightTTPD. It's awesome. <laughs> and SQLite. Yeah. What's but the yeah. Thing, 100%. <laughs> I mean, one thing... <clears throat> About pie holes, I, this is like first world problems to the max. Yeah. Is yeah. Is the Ethernet <laughs> being tied to the USB 2, it can only do mm-hmm. like 220-ish megabits per second. Yeah. Yep. Which is slower mm-hmm. than my internet. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. Yeah, for your internet specifically, Ven. Let's face it, most of the world, at least in the US, it still averages <laughs> around 30 all I'm hearing is second? you want me to hook one up and put a webcam on it and just give it <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, for most people, actually, this will be great if you just want to help your family and say they have like a 30 megabit internet download. Yeah. Just plug in the the, uh, the pie hole to their router and their ads are just gone. Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you could install Brave. But I yes, get this. Brave. This is a yeah. good solution for the entire house. Then again, we yeah. into that whole panel. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing stopping you from <laughs> installing it on, you know, something slightly beefier. Hmm? Yes, definitely. No, there isn't. It's just that if you are um, going through something that has a lot of ads, you will eventually hit that bottleneck. Oh, stop the knife file. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the host file is really, really nice. You should learn how to deny everything. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Uh, we're going to bounce out of here, but maybe you have a better solution. More than likely, you just might for setting up, you know, ad blocking at home or anything like that. You want to get in touch with us. Pedro, can they do it? Is it possible? Do we have to use Carrier Pigeon or TCPIP over uh, semi no Station Wagon? I don't know, given the internet here on Wednesday nights, probably a carrier pigeon would be more reliable. But hey, Aww. if you'd like to uh, uh, let us know about something that you found out or something that we got wrong or in a much rarer occasion got right and you'd like to add to that, you can do so by going to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button, you fill in the form. Just make sure you pick LWDW from the little selection box. Nope, not going to do That's all it. you need to do. I refuse to read. I blindly send messages. I kind of reworked this because I want to make sure everyone, because <laughs> you go to like Gamecast and you're like, wait a minute, why is this a gaming site? I want to talk about my floss project. You can, you know, if you're working on something, mm -hmm. you know, it's just absolutely wicked neat or just like semi wicked neat, 100%, anything made of face melting awesomeness. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to talk with you. Yes. We'd probably <laughs> like to get you on the show. It'd be one of those relationships. Um, Yay. Do that. Game developers, as always, you know. We got a Steam Curator page. You can go right through that. Or if you just got a question, be like, hey, but most importantly, you got something wrong. We do yes. love those. I <laughs> want to make a point. I had to uh, talk with a game developer. I know this isn't a gaming show, but this is mm. just a good piece of information because they had to like dig around and get a hold of me on Twitter. I was like, it said I was a spammer. I was like, did you copy and paste a press release in there by any chance? Like, oh, with like, links uh, and stuff, yeah. we get a reasonably actually a thing tied into a service that will activate our spam golem. So, yeah, a bunch, <laughs> bunch of links and stuff like that. So, mm, not the best way to go about yeah. it. Send us a message. We'll, we'll give you alternate ways to uh, get a hold to us. Uh, yes. We just got a nice little fun one this week, though. Yeah, uh, Zoe yeah. Uh, <laughs> got in touch, and uh, she has a question for Jill. I noticed Jill yes. has a, a large capacity <laughs> of penguin plushies. I suspect they will soon overflow the room, and Jill will be covered entirely by penguins. I wonder where she gets all these penguins, and if anyone can recommend a reliable source for me to acquire <laughs> some of my own. So, Jill, <laughs> yes, that I, you yes, the one with all the penguins. I am not going to sit <laughs> idly by while you encourage hoarding. I don't care if it's your plushies. <laughs> Well, well, so we this plushies. one. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorite penguins of all time. This is my uh, the Za Reason stuffed tux penguin, and it's under twenty dollars. And I put their link in the show notes. It's one of my favorite companies, and they actually sponsor the Linux Chicks of Los Angeles. Yay! Um, but many of my official tux penguins were given to me as swag at scale. We often get gifted stuffed penguins at our Linux Chicks LA booth. And uh, that's because we have we have tons of penguins on display at our booth. And everyone want, wants to add to uh, our uh, marching penguins. And I have penguins from everyone from Novell to Penguin Computing uh, to Corel Linux, um, and yeah, so 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 the the Linux conventions are a great way to to build up your your tux collection. Amateur. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh oh, but I have a I have a big one right behind me, but I don't know if you can you can see it. And that one was given to me by Patrick, and that's another way I get penguins is as gifts. But that's not a five foot <laughs> penguin. <laughs> no, but I I actually do have a penguin that's that's a six foot, but it's a, a blow up penguin. <laughs> <laughs> 
someday I'll have to stick that behind me. <laughs> but anyway, so we another good place you can you can get uh, peng, cute penguins, not just tux penguins, but just cute penguins in general, is on eBay and Amazon. And uh, doing a search for stuffed penguin, Linux penguin, tux penguin, or cute penguin is a really good way to get them. And actually, yes, I do have, oh, well, I'm sure over 100 now in my collection. And so every every week or so, you see a new one added behind me because I keep uh, moving some more in. <laughs> it's an ARG. <laughs> Go <Yeah>. back and watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Don't let this I love become tux. you. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I have the one penguin plushie and it was Nori's. And I'm like, yeah. oh, you're throwing away your plushies. Can I keep the penguin? Yes. Okay. I don't know, man. Uh, well, each to their own. People like to do the decoration. The closest thing I have to a penguin is like a Linus, reminding yeah. everyone that, you know, Linux is number one. Um, <laughs> That's totally number one finger. Yes. I, yes. <laughs> the, my house is a plushy free zone. Uh, it may not come to a surprise to anyone. Oh. No. Really? <laughs> I mean, I, I draw the line at pillow. <laughs> oh, ooh. someone yeah. needs to get <laughs> Ven one of those too. waifu pillows <laughs> with a penguin. If I get a waifu pillow, I'm going to get you on it just out of spite. <laughs> Aw. But yeah, Zoe, you're on the right track. All Linux chicks have a penguin collection. We all have, have a penguin. We call them the penguin stampede. So. <laughs> That's I the horde. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, uh, and lots of other penguin kitsch. <laughs> to their own. Hey, Yay, that's beautiful. Love them. Yeah. <laughs> Penguins are definitely available if you look for them. And if you get inflatable <laughs> ones, I mean, check your uh, like local tire supplier in place. Like any place you can get hydrogen could make for a fun afternoon. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. We've had penguin pillows at our Linux Chicks LA, uh, penguin uh, balloons um, at our Linux Chicks LA booth. And those those go over really well. Yeah, but they probably <laughs> filled them like full of that dangerous helium. We need some safe yes. American hydrogen. Oh, okay. Hydrogen. <laughs> oh, oh. We want the Hindenburg of pillows. Wait, what? Hindenburg, man. It's thing. All right, beautiful people. We got to bounce out of here. We're going to roll some credits. Keep being awesome. We love you. We love you, chat realm. Oh. Y'all oh, are oh. awesome. And thank you, um, Foxy. Um, um, yes, uh, the Blender creator, Ton Rosendahl, received the UBL Works Award for Technical Achievement at the 46th Annual Annie Awards. Hey, we got to thank all of our executive producers, Earth Theory and Mr. Fox Dog, <laughs> Andrew S., Empty, The Atomic Ass, Mike G., Barbara, and Drummer 7. And did I miss anyone? <laughs> yes. And of yes, course, yes. I mentioned uh, waifu pillows and mirrors already going off in, uh, in Discord. <laughs> you could probably just borrow some of his. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Yay to all our beautiful producers, executive producers. Thank you so much. If I missed your name in the credits, let me know. I do these by hand yes. each and every week. <laughs> And yes, Sandy, you. that number keeps getting more and off center. 